Hi everyone and welcome to my data office. Today I'm going to share with you seven simple text functions in Excel that you can use to improve the quality of your data. And as a bonus, I'm also going to share with you this little quick histogram in Excel by using a text function. All right, so let's start with some really simple things that you should start using if you're not already. The first one is concatenation. Very simple formula. It really allows you to concatenate the text between multiple columns as we can see in this example here. So if we want to concatenate John T. Doe, all we have to do is equal concatenate. You can see it here. And basically we're just concatenating the text that we're telling it to do so. And it's this T and Doe, but this will appear without the spaces because we haven't added those. So in order to add those, we need to call it as such space comma space and now it will look a lot better a simple way to do this too is to just use and so equals to a3 which is john and space and t and space and do very simple and straightforward but very useful to to know how to do and obviously there's also another way where you could take the individual names out of one column too but i did cover that over into another video which you can click it will be somewhere around here left and right i use this a lot for numbers so the left function basically you select the text that you want to to extract the left part of the text from so in our case we're going to extract the 555 of the number so we select a2 and we tell it how many number of characters we should move from the left to the right and to extract so in this case 555 we just want three characters right works the other way but for for the from the right hand side so equals to right at this value here uh, 444 we want to extract that out of the phone number the last four digits and it's as simple as that so this is very very helpful if you are collecting phone numbers in that format they're particular on the left but you need to divide into its um its particular fields it works a lot better with postal codes with zip codes as an example there are a lot of use cases for it very useful to have lower and upper this is very useful again at least when you're getting text names things like that you want it to be standard the lower function just makes all the characters to be lower as simple as that and upper does the opposite everything is an upper character but of course with proper names we want to use another function that pr function is called proper very easy to remember proper and then we select the uh, the text cell here it's my name George Fury can and it does it for you proper now one thing that you do need to keep in mind is if you do have a name such as uh, Joe Vaughn Doe that's how it should be spelled out if we do use proper it does make each word as a proper word oh what did I do sorry forgot to put the equal sign here so that's just something to watch for in case you are encountering names like this one now something else that you should keep in mind is the trim function the trim function basically gets rid of any unwanted spaces such as in here John Doe we can see there are a lot of spaces even after Doe there's quite a few so the trim gets rid of all the extra spaces like so so I use this in conjunction with the the proper or the upper so something like this proper of trim so first I want to get rid of all the extra um, spaces and then I want to have a proper format on this name there you go next one let's say that we want to extract all the usernames all the Twitter usernames out of these Twitter links which is something that you might want to do for various reasons these are sort of the top 
part of the top 10 most followed Twitter accounts. So that's why you see him here, Barack Obama, Justin Bieber, and Cristiano Ronaldo. How do we do that? Well, through um, text to columns. And with text to columns, we're basically telling, oh, it already does it. So we could separate it by either tab, it doesn't work in this case, or a particular character in our case would be the, uh, the slash here. And we do want to replace it. Yes, we do have data in there, but we don't care about it. And there you go. Right now, we just have the usernames on column D. And it's already sorted out for you. Another way to do it, I was looking at uh, different Amazon links. And let's say we want to extract the product out of there. Again, we can do it in a similar fashion. Text to column. And it works. But let's say that it's not being delimited by that backslash, but it's maybe something else. It's a group of characters. Let's say that um, it's not product. It could be something like this. There you go. Now, it might be a little bit more difficult that we still can select the, uh, the dash in there. Uh, something else that we could do, though, is replace the product by a particular character. So um, let's do the, I don't know, less than maybe. There you go. And now we can apply the same text to column. Less than. And now we have the product ID in its own column. I hope that's straightforward, but let me know in the comments if um, you don't find this useful. Okay, now this repetition, through this repetition uh, text function is how we could actually create this histogram, which is crazy. And I think it's very helpful if you have some sort of a data quality issue log. So in here, for example, we're going to track the number of cases where our data has completeness issues or a number of duplicates or issues with its accuracy. So the repetition, let's cover that function first. So you're using the repeat equals R-E-P-T. What should it do? Repeat, well, this text in A2, and we'll just tell it the number of times we want it to be repeated. So let's say uh, twice. We should now see the result as text text. Okay, how can we use that to our advantage? There's one thing that we need to know first. One is, the character n with the windings font here, it gets converted into a box, which which is what we want to use in order to, well, just have this histogram, right? And it's not perfect. It doesn't, um, you know, you don't get a box and a box and a half type of a thing, but it's still good at a high level. It's something really quick and fun to do. So what do we do here is we're basically telling to repeat this box or n repeat this box how many times well we wanted to let's say um, one box should represent a hundred times so that's what this function does here repeats character 110 is basically n in ascii code okay so we're telling it repeat um, or we can just say repeat this one or we can say character 110 in ASCII code. How many times do we want to repeat it for? Well, 110 divided by 100. And that gives us a box. In here, it gives us four boxes. In here, it gives us 10 boxes. So there you go. This is a really fun trick that you can use to create a quick histogram, maybe for your data quality dashboard in Excel. I hope this is helpful. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. And don't forget to comment. And please also subscribe as I do release a new video each week. Thank you.